Hi everybody, I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Today for Thriving in the Kitchen, we're going to do something a little fun and different than what we usually do. Um, as long as you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably heard of hot chocolate bombs or hot cocoa bombs. That's the newest big thing that everybody's into, the newest DIY craze. And I've been having fun making some cocoa bombs a little bit myself. So I've seen a lot of people who use freeze-dried fruits in their hot chocolate bombs. So I thought that would be a great way to use some of our Thrive Life food storage to do something fun and different. So today we're gonna make dark chocolate raspberry hot chocolate bombs. So what you need to do this is freeze dried raspberries. Um, you need dark chocolate melting wafers of some sort to make the shell with. These are uh, Ghirardelli, but you can use, um, as long as it's melting wafers, because if you use actual real chocolate, you have to worry about tempering it and all that, and that's not something I wanna mess with. You need some hot chocolate to fill the insides. I've got a Land O'Lakes raspberry hot chocolate here, but I also thought I might try this hazelnut cocoa because we really like to dip strawberries and raspberries in Nutella here, so I thought that might be a really good um, flavor combination with the hazelnut. So you're gonna need some molds. These are 70 millimeter um, half sphere molds. You can get these on Amazon. And I've cut my molds. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to deal with if you're using, um, they come in like six on a sheet, on one sheet, but if you cut them into individual pieces, it's a lot easier to work with. You could also use a different shape like these um, geometric hearts. I got those for Valentine's Day. I thought I might make some cocoa bombs for the kids for Valentine's Day, but you know, life happened and that didn't get done. So, so that's what you need. Um, the first step that we're gonna do is we're gonna crush up our raspberries into a powder. Uh, I did not. I don't like the idea of having like chunks of fruit floating in my hot cocoa. So most people will powder them. I've already separated out. When you um, get into a can, well, I've already dumped these. They came in a can like this. This is our family size can, and the raspberries are on sale this month, which is why one of the reasons why I decided to use them for this project. But when you open your can, um, especially with like the more delicate food items like raspberries, you're going to find some pieces that are already crushed um, a little bit into smaller bits. So I actually went through and separated out some of the smaller pieces that I found because I'm going to be powdering them anyways. So I figured I'd start with pieces that were already a little bit smaller. So now you can do this in any blender or this is um, my daughter's Ninja blender any kind of little food processor, mini food processor. Just dump that right in. Now some of this is actually already powdered. I don't know if you can see, but in any can of freeze dried food, you're gonna have a little bit of powder in the bottom of the can. It's just normal because of the texture of the food. That's what happens and that's really good. Like you don't ever wanna throw away that powder because you can save that and use it in all sorts of things, um, depending on if it's a fruit or a vegetable powder, you can sometimes use those in smoothies, you can use them in desserts, pancakes, you know, anything like that. Uh, even the meat powders you can put into, you know, any savory dish, soup, gravy sauce, anything you're making like that. So, so I've got the raspberries here. You don't need very much. I'd say that's about a half a cup because they're very, they have a very strong, bold flavor when they're freeze dried. So I'm going to blend these up in the Ninja. It's going to be loud. I apologize in advance. I'm just gonna make them into a powder. That looks pretty good. Now you can see that once they're powdered, they take up even less space. It's much less than half a cup now that it's powdered. It's the same amount of fruit. Okay, so this ninja I think is missing something in its seal. It always makes kind of a mess. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to melt our chocolate wafers to make our coating. This bag is already open because I found that these are actually really tasty to snack on also, which I try to stay away from them, but I couldn't help myself. So we're going to put these in a... I'm using a glass bowl. If you have something silicone, it's actually better to melt chocolate in 
but I don't have one right now, so I'm gonna use a glass bowl. So you just gotta be very careful. And when you're melting it, you wanna melt in 30 second increments at 50% power, and then stir it really well in between every time. And even if the first time, it is not gonna look very melted at all, but you still wanna give it a stir because you don't want it getting hot spots or burning because it'll ruin your chocolate. You can see here they're starting to melt. This is after the second, uh, 30 second interval. Now at this point you can see that it's pretty well melted. There's just a couple of small chunks that are left in there that aren't melted. So at this point it's actually best to just keep stirring until everything's melted and not put it back in the microwave because you don't want to overheat it and burn your chocolate because that will just ruin it. If you've ever worked with candy melts or chocolate then this will all be familiar to you, but this is just for anyone who has not ever worked with this kind of thing before. So now it's time to add our raspberry powder. I'm actually going to measure, this is actually only about probably a tablespoon, so I'm actually not going to measure it, but that's all it really ends up to be. And you can sift it through a fine mesh uh, strainer if you want to make extra sure that there aren't any clumps or any uh, seeds. A lot of moms I know will do this with their freeze-dried raspberries and blackberries if they're making something for their kids because uh, the kids sometimes don't like the texture of the seeds or who knows it might even be an adult. Some people just don't like that texture so you can do this to strain out all the seeds and any clumps that you might not want in your finished cup of hot cocoa. I think we've got this pretty good. If you uh, look, you can see that really all that's left in there is mostly the seeds. So by running it through the strainer, we will not have those raspberry seeds in our cocoa. And we're just going to stir and incorporate this in to the chocolate that we melted for the shell. Mmm, it smells so good. Now this won't be quite as smooth and quite as shiny as just uh, plain chocolate if you had not added in the fruit powder, but I prefer the idea of encapsulating this powder within the chocolate for the cocoa bomb. Some people add the fruit powder freeze-dried fruit powder right into the middle of their bomb with the cocoa mix, but I like doing it this way better. Now we're going to fill our shells. I prefer just doing this just with a plastic spoon. Some people use a pastry brush, but I found after a little bit of practice it's easiest for me just to do it with a spoon. You put about two spoonfuls in, and then you're going to Spread it with the back of the spoon until you get the edges all the way up to the edges of the mold. And once you've done that, you can really tip it. And let it flow around the edges. Adds a whole nother level of difficulty when you're trying to do this for the camera. I definitely need some practice with this. If you get any on the edges, you can take a pastry spreader to take that off. 
if you want. And then I just use a muffin pan to set these in while I do the next ones. have any excess uh, chocolate after you let it coat the edges you can tip it right upside down and let any extra fall back into the bowl Now, of course, I'm doing these just for us, just for my own family, and just for people who live in our own home. So I'm not going to worry about wearing gloves or putting my hair up or any of those things that I would do if I was preparing this for anyone else. I actually do want to get a pair of chocolate gloves. Well, they're like cotton gloves that you wear when you handle chocolate because these will come out of the mold so beautiful and shiny but then just all the handling that you have to do to get them filled and sealed, it takes a lot of the shine off of it, just from the heat of your fingers. So a pair of chocolate gloves is on my wish list. Okay, so I've got um, six shells, well, six half shells, so enough for three bombs, all ready to go. So I'm going to go put them in the freezer for just a few minutes. It doesn't even need 10 minutes. Okay, so we've got our shells, and they've just cooled um, for the first time. And i got to be honest with you, I live in Maine, and it's pretty cold outside. Alexa, what's the temperature? It's 26 degrees out, which is actually a lot warmer than it has been, so I'm hoping that this was cold enough to do the trick, but I never have extra room in my freezer, so outside it is. I also had to remelt. Uh, the chocolate was starting to get kind of hard, so while they were outside cooling, I just stuck the chocolate back in the microwave on 50% power just for like 20 seconds and then stirred just enough to loosen it back up. So what you can do now is um, you can add a second layer around the edges of the bombs because that is the place that you're going to tend to have the most trouble with them breaking is right around that top edge. So I don't actually do this all the time anymore. When I first, the first time I ever made these, uh, a friend of mine invited me over to make hot cocoa bombs because she wanted to make them and I was interested. And we had a wicked hard time. Like, it was, she basically gave up the cocoa bomb making trade at that point. But I wasn't about to give up. But it was difficult. And that was the biggest problem that I had with mine was the edges uh, breaking or being too thin. But at the same time, you don't want to get them too thick because you want to make sure that the bomb is going to explode and pop open when you put the hot milk on it. So kind of just a delicate balancing act between um, getting them just thick enough without getting them too thick. And after some practice, you really don't even necessarily need that second coat. But I'm going to put it on today. I'm just putting it around that upper edge. Okay, that's all of them, so I'm just going to go put them back outside to harden off that last layer of chocolate. Okay, so I've got the bombs in from their freezing. 
So the next thing you need to do is unmold them, and this is where I have had the most trouble. So what you want to do is just very carefully, you first want to separate this edge from the rest of the chocolate. So I just pull it very, very gently all the way around, almost pulling it um, down and back at the same time to separate the complete edge. And then once you've got the whole edge separated, you can just push on the bottom and just pop it right out. And see how beautiful and shiny that is? Don't worry about those jagged edges, those uneven edges, because we're gonna melt them off. So I've got a piece of parchment paper here that I'm gonna put that down on. And then we're gonna do the rest. Just very gently around the edges, but that second coat of chocolate really helps. Now, I had a little extra chocolate left over. I really wanted to try these geometric heart molds, so I've heard that they can be pretty touchy and difficult. So we'll see what I got, because I got these molds and I had not used them yet. It does not look too bad. Now you can see a couple spots where the chocolate is pretty thin because you can see the light right through it, but as long as it's not a complete hole, it should be fine. And you can also patch up a hole with melted chocolate if you need to. All right, everybody, now what I have right here is um, what they used to call a mug warmer. I don't even know if they make these anymore. Honestly, I have had this since I was in college and I graduated in 2000 and I am shocked that I still have a handful of these and that they still function but I think you can still get something like this I don't know if you can get what they would call a mug warmer but you can get um, something that they call a candle warmer which is the same idea it just gets warm on that little plate and you don't have you can use other this is basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna melt the rough edge of the bomb a little bit and that's gonna make all the edges smooth and even so that when we go to match them up and put them together they'll fit because we've melted off all those jagged areas and it also um, makes you know the edge soft so that they will stick together but some other things that you can use instead of a mug warmer is I really would like to be using my electric griddle but I am missing the power cord to it right now so I can't use it and you can also use a plate that you've put in the microwave until it's hot or warm just make sure that it's a flat plate that doesn't have, you know, any kind of a dip to it. Or you could use, some people use a pan that they warmed on the stove. I just, I prefer to use something that gets warm rather than hot. But, so this is getting warm. I've got foil over it just so it doesn't get completely dirty. So you just take one of your halves of your bombs and you're going to put it on there and you're just going to swirl it and twirl it just a little bit and lift it straight up and you'll see that you've got that edge you've got that edge smooth now do that with half of these these are going to be the bottom halves we want to get the edges smooth on these so I've got three bombs worth so I will melt down three of them you just want to be careful you don't want to melt too much you just want to melt just enough to get it nice and even 
I'm going to try a couple of my heart balms, which, like I said, I have never done these before, and I've heard they can be difficult. But we shall see. You never know until you try. Oops. If I had my pancake griddle, I would have a much larger surface to do this on, so I could avoid the dirtier areas. But alas, I do not have it right now. So next we're going to take our cocoa. I have got this Land O'Lakes Raspberry Cocoa. And I've got a hazelnut cocoa that I thought might be good. Um, you can get both of these right at Walmart. They have them on Amazon also. I've gotten the Land O'Lakes just at my regular grocery store also. All right, so now I've moved these um, onto the back of a mini muffin pan because you need to have them up where you can kind of get a hold of them. So I've got my cocoa mix and we're gonna put I don't even usually measure, but you don't need a whole lot of cocoa in these. So we'll put like a heaping tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. I usually just pour straight out of the little sack because really you've got quite a lot of chocolate already in the shell. So you don't need a whole bunch of cocoa powder because it's it can be overwhelming. So these 70 millimeter shells, like this packet of cocoa actually calls for only six ounces of water to make a cup of cocoa water or milk but with all the extra chocolate from the shell and any decorations you put on really I usually would put about 12 ounces of hot milk for these so that they wouldn't be too strong but of course that's also personal preference oh I wanted to make one with the hazelnut and I completely forgot so let's see what we can Oops. I will do the hazelnut in a couple of the hearts. Gotta be careful with these guys. You don't want to let the powder get up on the edge because it won't seal quite as well. These hearts are a little bit smaller than the spheres, so I think these would probably be more like an eight ounce cup of cocoa. Ooh, that smells so good. And then the next thing you wanna do is add in your mini marshmallows. I like to pack in as many as I can get because I think it adds to the explosion effect. I don't know how many I'll get in these hearts. These are just something different that I'm trying, so I'm not going to be too picky with it. Just make sure they're not sticking out over the edge or you won't be able to get your second half on. And of course, you can lump them up over the t edge because you've got you know, this part of the cavity also that you've got to fill. Oops. So then, we're back with the warming plate and I've put a clean section of the foil there, so we're going to melt these halves, just give them a little bit of a spin and a twist, get them, and then you want to get them right on to the other half. You can use your two fingers to make sure that it's centered right on it. There we go. definitely easier to pick it right up in your hand when you go to put it on so that you can center them. You can use your finger if you need to clean off any of the excess melted chocolate. I usually keep 
paper towel right handy to wipe my hands off. You don't want to get melted chocolate all over your hands because it's really going to dunk up the pretty uh, shiny exterior of your bombs. So you can see how that goes right together. And like I said, obviously if you're making these for anyone outside of your own household, you would want to use gloves. All right, let's see if I can get one of the hearts to go together. I've just heard that they're very, very difficult and testy. You can see I have a little bit of marshmallow sticking out there, so I'm going to touch that up with the chocolate. Oh, that actually wasn't so bad. These are very full. I'm not used to working with something quite so small. these because I've got them so full. Hmm. It's not coming out too bad. Now I really wish I'd have gotten these done for Valentine's Day. All right, let's get that on there and press. Give it some pressure to get it to go together. And set it down and we will let these you can see I've got a little bit of excess chocolate there on my seam which could just be okay so now those are ready to just let them set up and then we will decorate them so what I've done here is I've just taken some pale pink candy melts and melted them up just the same way that we did with the chocolate and now for decorating, you can use a piping bag, but I don't have any piping bags. You don't have to be fancy. I just take, this is a regular uh, snack sized Ziploc sandwich baggie. Now if you put it down in to a small drinking glass like this, fold it over the top, you can fill the, you can fill the bag this way pretty easily with the candy melts. You want to make sure that your candy melts are not too hot because if you drizzle them onto the bombs when they're too hot, they are going to melt right through your bombs. So you just put this in the baggie. And then I just snip off a very tiny corner of the bag. Mm. I I got it. Yeah, I got it. So the other thing you can do, you can either drizzle these right over the bombs, but you can also uh, use the piping bag to fill a silicone mold like this. This is flowers and you would want to use the piping bag so you can get right down into the little crevices of the mold. Otherwise it's going to come out bubbly. Also because these are pretty small and delicate so you want to make sure that you're not getting it too far outside the mold. And then the key with the molds like this is you want to tap, 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 tap to make sure you get all the bubbles out. This one is going to be pretty tricky just because of the design, but hopefully it will come out okay. We'll see how that comes out. So, for drizzle, you're going to want to have drizzle and you also want to have something to decorate the bombs with once they're drizzled. Sorry. I've got a couple of things 
I've got some some crushed up freeze dried raspberry and like I talked about before these are just crushed pieces that were already naturally crushed in the can because it's a delicate fruit so I just picked out the already crushed pieces to save myself the work and you can also use sprinkles obviously I also have some hearts that might be cute so you want to drizzle you just want to start off the bomb and go right across the bomb like this if you're going to drizzle and then just put the topping on while it's still wet and you're done you can do one here with sprinkles and we can see how this rose came out I am extremely impatient I literally put this outside in the cold for a total of about one minute so that's all it took for this to harden. It's actually pretty cute. I don't know if you would even notice if it had any bubbles because of the delicate pattern, but I'm just breaking off the extra around the edges. And then you can use your melted chocolate to glue that right on to your bomb. That is super cute. Okay, now for the for the hearts, we could do the same thing. You see on these, I really had to kind of glue together the edges because these were more difficult than the other sphere bombs, and it's my first time trying them, but let's see what we can do here. Some with raspberry. Put this heart on one of these. And we'll do one of these with sprinkles too. Got sprinkle heart, a raspberry heart, and this. And I gotta tell you guys, this raspberry in the dark chocolate is so amazingly delicious. I couldn't even help myself. I was scraping all the leftover chocolate out of the bowl. It was so good. I'm not even supposed to eat sugar and I couldn't I couldn't resist it. So these are going to be super delicious. I'm super excited to try these.
folks. Now you've seen how you can use freeze-dried fruit in your cocoa bombs. A lot of people like to use the freeze-dried fruit because they like it better, the taste of the real fruit better than the artificial flavors that you can find for candies and cocos. There's so many possibilities that you could do. You could do strawberries and you could do either like with white cocoa, you could do a strawberries and cream or you could do it with chocolate cocoa and have a chocolate covered strawberry flavor. There's even recipes for like a cheesecake flavored cocoa mix. So you could do a, a strawberry cheesecake cocoa bombs. You could use the raspberries like I did. We've got pineapple that you could use. You could do a pina colada bomb, pineapple, coconut. I mean, the possibilities are just endless. So I chose raspberries to use this time because we have raspberries on sale this month for 30% off at wickedprepared.thrivelife.com to see all of our monthly specials. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed making the cocoa bombs. It's my new favorite hobby. It's only about the third or fourth time that I've done it, but I'm getting better every time and I'm having a lot of fun. The kids really like it too. So thank you for joining me. Good night.